as Pfizer prepares to seek U.S. authorization for use of their vaccine in children six months to five years old, hesitancy amongst parents is the next hurdle. In the United States, just 28% of five to 11-year-olds have had one dose. Garrison Elementary School in Washington, D.C. has bucked that trend, with 80% of students receiving their first shot. Michelle Martin sits down with the school principal, Brigham Kiplinger, to explore how they accomplish this feat. Brigham Kiplinger, Mr. Kip, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. In the spirit of full disclosure, I want everybody to know that we actually know each other because you were my children's fifth grade teacher. That's right. The reason that you're on the front page of the New York Times is that your your school has become noteworthy in that a lot of parents, even parents who are vaccinated themselves, have, be, have proven to be very hesitant about getting the littlest vaccinated uh, once those vaccines became aware uh, available. So and about 80% of the kids in your school have had at least one shot. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is a vast difference from the sort of the national averages where I think it's about 17% are fully vaccinated around the country and maybe 28% have had one dose. So, you know, just, you're just definitely an outlier. So the first I wanted to ask is, when did you develop an urgency around getting the littlest vaccinated? How did that come to you? Yeah, really, it was from the very first sign that a vaccine was uh, was coming online for, for our age group, uh, which was many months ago by now. And then, of course, it went through rigorous clinical trials and research and the approval process. Um, we started laying the groundwork for this even last year. We we had been through a, a similar uh, you know sort of learning curve and and challenge in getting staff and families vaccinated, which we approached uh, more than a year ago through uh, outreach uh, with uh, local Black pediatricians and uh, a lot of connecting to resources of various kinds targeted in in families' home languages and that kind of thing. And uh, we so we had to start with the with the grownups to get them uh, more or less comfortable first. And then uh, as soon as uh, we learned that the vaccine would be approved likely in uh, late October, early November for five to 11 year olds, we uh, reached out to the, the city to uh, line up uh, clinics here at school uh, through DC Health and the Children's Hospital team who have been wonderful. And then we started spreading the word and uh, really just uh, making sure that every family knew about this opportunity and that we were shaping a path straight to our door so that there was no uh, logistical barrier to, to families uh, making that decision. Well, back up a little bit. But what, what, is, what do you think the hesitation has been? A lot of these communities, people have had multiple family members get sick. You know, That's in right. some cases, I mean, in, in Washington, D.C., the mayor's own sister passed away from COVID. So it's not like people don't know that this is serious. And in fact, adults in the Washington, D.C. area have embraced, you know, vaccines. Yep. But, but the littles, the, one, the little kids are the ones that people have been hesitant about, even, as I said, parents who have gotten vaccinated themselves. So what were you hearing in terms of the hesitation? You're right, Michelle. And uh, it, COVID has been devastating nationwide, and especially here in, in our very own community. Many of our families have been directly affected. And, uh, and, and that made some of them probably just want to hunker down and, and, uh, and, and not leave the house, which is completely understandable. Uh, when we're talking about our children, that's our, our pride and joy. And it's almost like our, our heart living outside of our body is, is how I've heard my wife describe it. And, uh, and so anytime we're putting something inside our children's body, we want to be absolutely sure that it's safe and, uh, and is going to, to uh, keep them safe. And, and that uh, people go through that, uh, that learning curve and that, that journey at, at different paces. And uh, of course, that's complicated by the, the complex and painful history of, of uh, medicine and medical science in communities of color in particular, which is a majority of our school community. And uh, families know the history, whether they, uh, you know, whether, whether it's uh, in, at an academic level or just uh, being passed down from through the generations. And we have to overcome that understandable and very rational mistrust of, of the uh, disparate health, health outcomes born of systemic racism. And so, uh, you know, we we were up against a, a fair amount of of that, and and also just the misinformation that's rampant online and and in, on social media, and uh, and that's a that's a slow process. It's a lot of face to face conversations. It's connecting uh, families with experts who look like them and speak like them, 
and uh, and then just listening to people's uh, questions and their worries and validating those and not also uh, letting them stay where they are, but uh, but constantly moving towards uh, what the science is saying. What did you do exactly in terms of getting people in front of people who you say look like them and mm -hmm. and and they, they trust like what did you do well it was a few things uh one was that we have some amazing leaders of our parent teacher organization including one who's uh, pediatrician is a, a local pediatrician who served the shaw community for many years uh dr hay is her name and uh, she was willing to uh come on on zoom and and host a, a q a with our families that was uh a fall a year and a quarter ago um I guess fall 2020, and uh, and then we've had her uh, return for for smaller group conversations since with staff and with families, and uh, so that was part of it. And then enlisting families as our vaccine ambassadors, if you will. Um, there's uh, there's something most powerful about hearing directly from a parent who shares your experience and uh, can can meet you where you are uh, and assure you that their child got. And got the shot and and they woke up the next day with a slightly sore arm but nothing else and uh and they're safer for it you had a mobile vaccination advance come to the school like why was that important after hours like 3 30 to 7 30 like why was that important Yep, the, the shots got to go where the people are, and in this case, where the kids are, and the kids are at school, and the parents are picking them up from school, and so we worked with uh, DCPS and, and Children's Hospital to bring the clinics right to our gym and cafeteria here at school, what we call the Garrison Commons, and uh, it's a familiar uh, environment, and kids could play on the playground while, they, while their parents waited in line, and we had popcorn and music and a movie playing in the background and popsicles Ooh. after their shots, and we just made it fun and joyful, uh, but also convenient for families not having to make a, an appointment with their pediatrician or, uh, or miss any school. They could just pick up at regular dismissal or aftercare dismissal until 7.30 in the evening. Uh, no excuses for not popping in and at least uh, asking your, your questions and sharing your, your worries, uh, whether or not you decided to stay for your shot that night or not. And uh, we've now had three or four clinics and each one, uh, the first one, we got about 100 wildcats uh, with shots in their arms and then another 25 at the next one, another 30 at the next one. And we've got another on Friday and are hoping for, uh, for even more uh, inching closer to full vaccination. You know, some people would say that that's not just not your business as an educator. I can imagine what some people would say, well, what I do would get my shots and whatever, it's just not your business. You know, notwithstanding the fact that you have to hit a lot of shots in order to go to school, you know, for years. I mean, for, yep. for years, that has been the case. But this, this particular one, a lot of people say it's not your business. What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you pointed out that uh, there there was never a similar uh, controversy around the polio vaccine when my when my parents were growing up, or uh, around you know MMR shots that that children around the country get every year for school. It's required, and and for whatever reason, this has become so uh, polarizing and, and politicized, given the the uh, the schisms in our in our body politic uh, at mm -hmm. large. But uh, you know, uh, to your question about whether this is uh, my or our business, uh, I, I understand the concern. But uh, the the nature of school has changed fundamentally in the last two years, and uh, children cannot learn if they are not well and and if they are not in school. We saw that uh, crystal clear in the in the early months and first year of the pandemic, and and once we know better, we have to do better. And so we've put all of our focus in. Uh, in in the past year or so, in well, even since the since the jump into meeting our our family's physiological needs, whether it's for uh, housing or or grocery gift cards or uh, rent assistance, whatever it is, uh, we need to remove uh, the barriers to learning. And uh, the vaccine is 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 one of the most important and powerful uh, weapons in our arsenal to keep kids in school. And so, as the leader of the school, uh, I believe it is my business and and our moral imperative to uh, to, to do everything we can to, to keep children in class and getting their hearts and minds stronger every day. One of the parents interviewed in the New York Times piece said that you harassed them. And she said that that's okay, though, because you're family, <laughs> which is a high compliment. But, but tell me both about those things. Do you harass them? And um, are you family? Do people think of you as family? 
Yeah, that that's Kamika Kosi, and she's not wrong. Uh, my my own family and my former students and uh, any friends, everyone who knows me knows that I can I can be uh, hard charging at times and 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 uh, not always take no easily for an answer. Uh, but I, I try to save it for when the stakes are the highest and it's the most important. And and this feels like that moment and 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 that issue. Um, I I I try to, and I think I do uh, respect. Uh, families' uh, wishes and their their worries, and give them the time and the space and the grace to go through that uh, you know that decision making process themselves, um, while respecting their their unique context and circumstances, uh, but also continuing to to reach out and 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 not just uh, take the first no as as the final answer. One of the things that you hear from some people who say that they're resistant to getting the vaccine is they feel like people are talking down to them. Mm -hmm. And you can see where race could be part of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering how you how you navigated that. I mean, obviously, you have a long history in, in this particular school district. You've worked with diverse kids, mm -hmm. you know, kids from different backgrounds who are not from your same background for, a, you know, for a long time. I'm sure other people are facing that where they feel like, well, I don't really have the right to tell other people what to do. Or people feel like, you know, it's, get out of, you don't, you don't know me, you know, or, yep. you know what I mean? Like, how do you yes. deal with that? Um. We try to start with listening and uh, listening with curiosity, genuine curiosity and humility that we don't have all the answers. We're all trying to figure this out. This is uncharted territory and we're all learning together and we're learning in our own ways from our own sources. And when the information that they've uh, that that a family has been reading is 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 straight up wrong, such as that the the vaccine is going to alter their child's DNA, then I walk them over to the the. Uh, the nurse from Children's Health right there in the commons at our clinic and and uh, and they talk about it. And it's not leadership if you're not uh, uh, helping people to outgrow themselves and if you're not outgrowing yourself each day. And uh, certainly as a white man in, in a diverse school community and in a, in a city that uh, uh, with the fraught racial dynamics that DC has, this is my hometown and I uh, will be here forever and, and uh, love it to death. And I am uh, well aware of of the the fraught history and uh, uh, try to approach that with uh, with grace and curiosity. Has anybody ever just like straight up hung up on you? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Without everything, like what was that like, and how did you handle it? It's hard. Uh, you know, I uh, despite five years in this role and many in and almost twenty years in in urban education. Uh, I, I, I like being liked and I, I try to be a people pleaser and, and um, it, it, the pandemic ha, has made that impossible. Uh, leadership in general, it, it makes that impossible, but especially in, in the pandemic, um, not everybody wants the same thing or, uh, or expects that. And, um, and so, you know, my, uh, my, my gentle, uh, you know, loving harassing sometimes I, I think has, you know, has, has either uh, hit the wrong note or, or rubbed people the wrong way, and and I always try to circle back uh, with love and and a hug and uh, and ensure assure them that uh, that it's coming from a place of love and respect. Um, but yeah, we we've got to keep moving forward. We can't can't stay where we are, and uh, and and inevitably that will uh, involve um, growing through some discomfort for myself and for our school family. You're at eighty percent. Like, what would it take to get to a hundred percent? It's a great question. I think uh, inevitably it's going to take the the city uh, and the district mandating uh, the vaccine for those final few hardcore holdouts. But we're again we we have another clinic on Friday, and I've been in touch with some of our families who were uh, either soft or hard nosed a few weeks ago at our last clinic, and I'm hoping and 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 expecting that a few a few more of them will come out. And then we'll just keep chipping away at it. I, I got an exciting push notification that we all heard that uh, that the FDA is is uh, moving forward with potential um, provisional authorization of the uh, vaccine for babies to four year olds, which will uh, help um, keep our our pre K students safe and uh, welcome another round of of clinics through the spring to to get them fully vaxxed. So uh, onward to, towards brighter days. Do you think that it should be mandatory? For the youngest, I mean, New Orleans has just taken that step. Do you think it should be mandatory? Yes, it should. Um, we've we've 
done that with many other vaccines through through our history, and uh, this one needn't be any different. Uh, we know from the experience of the past couple of years that we are not done with uh, with the virus or with its its uh, constantly evolving variants. And the vaccination it has been proven to be the best uh, protection, hands down, uh, against serious illness and and worse. So uh, we need to we need to take every measure for every child to keep them in classrooms, getting their hearts and minds stronger. Is there something that you, I mean, you're not in the business of sort of telling other educators what to do, but is there something that you think you've learned here that you would like other people to, that you would share with other people, you know, share your experience if, if they're kind of pulling their hair out at this point? The trust that we've been uh, building over the past five years was uh, prerequisite and foundational to to getting through this, this latest stage. Uh, and uh, so certainly begin there, um, but wherever you're beginning, uh, we now know that uh, while blended learning and, and uh, flexible scheduling and that kind of thing have their benefits, that there is no substitute or shortcut to uh, joyful, rigorous in-person learning, and that that needs to be um, safeguarded and ensured at, at all safe costs. And we now know that the vaccine is, is one of the ways to do that, as well as masking and uh, outdoor dining, such as we implemented a year ago and continue to do even on chilly days like today, um, as well as uh, routine testing that some of our staff members were instrumental in, in, in helping the district to, to get online. Um, let's just, let's throw every po possible public health um, and safety measure uh, in place that we can, and then keep kids in school and uh, and keep loving on them and holding holding them to high standards and connecting with their families, uh, listening to to their worries, and uh, and then also holding their hand and, and helping them uh, through and and past those. Uh, and lots of hugs and popsicles. That's right, hugs popsicles and popsicles always always popsicles help sweeten the deal. Okay, all right. Brigham Kiplinger, Mr. Kip, the principal of Garrison Elementary School. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Michelle.